Hi, this is Sarah. And this is Rachel. And this is The Ripper Diaries, a podcast where we rip apart episode by episode of The Vampire Diaries. Warning, this is a rewatch podcast. We're always talking about spoilers. We always spoil things for the future. And we're just in that point in the season where it's going to keep happening. So, warning. Yeah, this week we're talking about season three, episode four, Disturbing Behavior. Mm -hmm. This is the chilly episode. That's all I can think of now. I didn't even remember it was in this episode, and now that's all I think of. It's the only thing I remember about this episode for some reason, so that's what I keep referring to it as, is the chilly episode. Yeah. We'll anyway, get there. there's more we'll that happens there. other than that. <laughs> yeah. We start off where we spent a lot of the last episode, which is, of course, mm-hmm. Chicago. Um, we start with the classic Chicago montage and the club music mix. It feels like we're in an episode of, like, a TLC What Not to Wear episode, oh which my we God. are. Yeah. <laughs> we are. Yes. Definitely what not to wear. Yeah. Stefan and Klaus have taken Rebecca shopping for modern clothes, yep. and they're sitting on these, like, couches drinking mm-hmm. champagne, and she's obviously in the dressing room room and they convince her that she has to come out because she thinks she doesn't have enough clothes on Mm -hmm. because modern clothes obviously it's changed a lot yeah and she finally comes out in like a tiny little dress and she's complaining about how women in the 21st century dress like prostitutes yep and she used to get dirty looks just for wearing pants in the 1920s Mm -hmm. and klaus says hey you wore trousers (laughs) so women today could wear nothing Thank you Love for your that. service, Rebecca. Yeah. We, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Rebecca. <laughs> we respect you Love for that. that. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just so funny. The scene is like, it's them all poking fun at each other and playing annoyed. Yeah. And Klaus is pissed about the yeah. fact that Rebecca lost the one reason he woke her up, the mm-hmm. one thing he needed from her, the necklace. And Rebe- Rebecca's like, that's not my fault. So Rebecca asks Stefan what he thinks about her dress. Oh and he's like, God. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, I can always tell when you're lying, Stefan. Yeah. Um. So she goes back into the fitting room and Klaus looks at Se- Stefan and says, nice one. Good work. <laughs> These two are just vibing. Yeah. All part of the plan. All a part of the plan. And yep. Stefan says, that he's gonna go get some fresh air Mm -hmm. so he leaves and as he's going to the door he sees Catherine across the street standing there like waiting for him and she kind of like motions and starts to walk away and so he goes outside to follow her so things are happening in chicago yeah i love all the chicago scenes i do too yeah they're fun and i actually really like the mystic falls scenes in this one too especially this one at the gilbert house yeah now it'll all make sense for all of you yeah (laughs) in the chili (laughs) yeah in the gilbert house damon and elena are cooking they're in the kitchen and it's revealed they're making chili for a potluck yeah. yet again, like the event of the day in yeah, Mystic Falls. Yeah, a potluck this time. Um, and Damon is like teasing her, like everyone brings chili, like why are yeah. you making chili? And Alaric comes over at this point and Elena asks Alaric what time he wants to go, like just to the to the founder's party. And then Damon and Elena like keep bantering. Yeah. They're flirting. Elena's laughing. They do like a little like... Sh- she has like a the shoulder hip bump. Check. Yeah, like yeah. A hip check moment, which is such a flirty it's thing to so do. It's so flirty. Like crazy flirty. Because he's like poking fun about like everyone's going to bring chili. Like mm-hmm. nine people have brought chili. And she says, it's an old family recipe. Yeah. And he says, I knew your old family. They make terrible chili. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they hip check. And Alark's just standing there like, what? what is going yeah. on? What Alar- is this? Yeah, Alark is not heavy. He even says like, what is he doing here again? Yeah. Yeah. It is the most blatant, like, flirting yeah. that Damon and Elena have done in general, and especially like this mm-hmm. in front of somebody. And Alaric is like... Which is saying a lot Which is saying a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Alaric sees everything. Yeah, and so he goes so far as to ask what Damon's even doing there. Mm-hmm. And Damon says, she knows. Like... Which I like because it's kind of like giving Elena a moment to either talk about it or to just like kind of brush it past if she doesn't want to like get into it. Um, But she does say like, he thinks I'm going to (laughs) break. Like he thinks I'm going to break. And, um, you know, he like, I just want to pretend like I didn't spend the whole summer like going after somebody who never wanted to be found. Yeah. Um. So she's kind of recognizing like how bad things are and that she failed at mm-hmm. that whole mission. But yeah, it's like a weird thing because like Damon's in there saying like, oh, she's in denial. Yeah. She's yeah. Like, I'm not in denial. Yeah, of course. But then Damon rightfully points out like if she wasn't in denial a little bit, then she wouldn't be wearing the necklace, which yeah. is clearly like a sign that she's in denial and that she's still yeah for Stefan yeah it's her symbol home. of her undying love yeah. for Stefan is what he calls it which also he has to like put his hand on I the know. necklace while doing this he steps so close to her and puts his hand around it which yeah. is like 
could have just said the necklace statement. Like the flirting is turned up so far. I know. To grab someone's necklace, I know. I was like, wow, yeah, they that's such a like an intimate action to Yeah, do. they've come a long way. <laughs> he's come a long way well yeah she's kind of just standing there um but yeah alaric again is just like ah what is going on yeah he's having none he's of just it. watching that um and that ends that scene and we go back to chicago where Catherine is like waiting mm-hmm. for stefan he catches up and asks what she's doing and you know if klaus knows that Catherine is there she will be dead she's she will dead die. yeah um and Catherine says like happy you still care and mm-hmm. asks if the necklace that they're looking for is the one that Stefan gave Elena. So co- clearly revealing, oh, like, she, yeah, she's she knows. keeping up. She's following. She knows what's going on. She's still Catherine. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Which he doesn't want to answer. And Catherine says that she wants in on whatever it is that Stefan is yeah. planning to do. Um, you know, saying Stefan's not the diabolical type. Yeah. Yeah. She's basically insinuating like his plan is not going to work. And Stefan's yeah. like, no, no, I have it under control. Yeah. If the most diabolical woman I know doesn't know. Yeah. Then clearly I'm doing something right. Which I actually feel like is like counterintuitive. Like yeah. if she can't figure it out, probably means it's not a good plan. Yeah. Which basically he doesn't really have a plan. He's just hoping they don't figure it out. And he has a plan. He talks about it later. I but guess. Like, but well, that but for the necklace specifically. Like, yeah, he doesn't have no, a plan about that. No plan. But anyway, C- Catherine is like, Klaus is smarter than you. He's smarter than everyone. Like, mm-hmm. it's not going to work. And then she also says, by the way, I've heard about the sister. Be careful because she'll ruin you. Yeah. Yes. Again, clearly keeping track. And yeah. she knows, like, who are the problems here. And then mm-hmm. Stefan is underestimating everyone. Everyone. Yeah. Um, which we'll get to. Which, which she's right. Yeah. Okay. Like, uh, Rebecca is the downfall of Stefan in this episode. Yeah. So. Um, but I love Catherine in the scene. I think it's so funny how I she's also too. like, oh, I forgot you're bad now. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> calling him <laughs> out like, teasing him. bad Stefan. I also really liked her look. Just a little moment of appreciation for that. Because it's yeah. like, it's very 2010s, but I still think it aged really well. Oh, yeah. Like, Catherine always stays. Like, yeah. Her looks always she's look always good. She's always trendy, yeah. Yeah, but not too trendy where it's like now it looks terrible yeah but yeah um but yeah stefan hits her with the happy to know you still care yeah and then he walks away he's not gonna let her in on whatever it is that he is planning mm-hmm. which we'll get into later yeah back at the gilbert house yeah back at the gilbert house jeremy fell asleep while drawing he's back and yeah, he's drawing his little anime character yeah yeah he's drawing it looks like some sort of anime character but he's like asleep in bed and he's laying in bed and Anna is there next to him and she says Jeremy and he wakes up he's shocked that she's there and he gets up and they're kind of talking over each other where Anna's like not totally sure that Jeremy can hear her because he's kind of like talking about how you know her being there and everything but not directly like responding to her but then eventually he does respond to her and he's like yes I can hear you and Anna's surprised because she says she's been trying to get him to hear her for days and he says it must be because he was dreaming about her. Yeah. I hate this. It's just a quick scene, but I hate it. Ugh. It's Jeremy, so, it's hard. Because I don't hate Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard though, because I don't hate it because I really liked that. Yeah. Nothing and bad she, has happened at this point too. No, no. So I would say okay. at this point, I don't hate it. I don't hate this scene. It's, it's so hard. She died. Like she I died. I know, I know. And also it's not bad to like dream about your dead ex whoever like yeah. that's not bad know, that's so I fair know. i just am t- it's tainted by what i know at least i know to. where we will go we yeah will, yeah I, we will get there eventually yeah. but yeah it is a little weird knowing that but on a first watch i feel like i was really like it's so sad it for is. him he loved her yeah. and she died and sad for anna her later it's scenes so are so sad. sympathetic even yeah. this episode it's just all around oh yeah um, yeah but yeah so they're having this whole thing because now they can see each other they realize it's mm-hmm. like wait you're actually like you can hear me we're still both like here yeah um and so they're having this whole conversation and downstairs caroline has arrived and this is the quintessential caroline outfit oh in my, my mind God. like the summer dress with the pink cardigan like yeah. when i think of a caroline outfit it is this outfit definitely. from this episode it's so her it is no it is it's definitely a very caroline look yeah it's not my vibe personally but i love it for her it looks good on her um, so Caroline has a bowl of food in her hand and she said she brought gifts and Elena's immediately like, please say that's not chili, which is <laughs> chili. I just love the chili plot. It's so funny. Which also if it is chili. It's just like a bowl. <laughs> it would yeah, be a weird, weird vessel to bring chili <laughs> in. But okay. A weird. 
<laughs> still but anyway the actual anyway. gift is bonnie yeah. bonnie is finally thank god so freaking four and bonnie's finally just showing up yeah um but anyway they're obviously all excited to see her and elena mm-hmm. hugs her and jeremy comes downstairs who's also of course excited to see bonnie mm-hmm. and he runs over to hug her and jeremy like kisses bonnie and they are hugging having a moment when he like looks over his shoulder and sees <gasps> anna in the mirror which is where he's starting to go like it's towing a line. It's towing yeah. a line, which you don't have a lot of info at this point, so it doesn't no. necessarily mean anything, but you're like, hmm, Jeremy, why are you uh, kissing and hugging Bonnie and, like, They're literally Anna. being reunited for the first time in months, months probably. Yeah. yeah. Shady. Shady. A little, little suspicious. Jeremy. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of suspicious, our two, <laughs> two biggest suspects going to deal with another huge what suspect. What are you talking about? These are my faves. Well, they are, but they're... <laughs> <laughs> what are they up to? Obviously... I support them. I mean, I support them, yes, but... Anyway, Liz and Damon walking through the town square. Uh, Damon is asking Carol like about Bill being there, and she, Liz says she's like has him detained. She's getting the vervain out of his system. She's drying him out, and Damon asks her why they can't just kill him, yeah. and she's like, "He's Caroline's father. We can't just kill yeah. him. Not because murder is wrong. No, not because Caroline's wrong. father. We know where we know where Liz stands <laughs> on that. Come on. Yeah. And yeah, she just says because he's Caroline's father." And Liz is at this point, she's like, I'm not an advocate for your lifestyle, like to Damon about yeah. being a vampire, obviously. And Damon asks if that's what she said to Bill, like when he came out or something like that. And they're still bantering. Liz may not be an advocate, but they're still besties. She can lie to herself if she wants to, but yeah. they're still uh, they're still a dynamic duo, these two. Yeah, besties. So they're going to go take care of Bill. So finally they arrive to the cellar where Bill is now tied up in the chair and his mouth is duct taped. Yeah, I was like, the duct tape was not necessary. Not Caroline was well, also Caroline was screaming her head off in yeah, there yesterday. Yeah, no one thought anything of it. So I'm sure he could have been not duct taped. Liz was definitely going a little too far. I <laughs> have a little too much fun with that one. She was like, he deserves this one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's but he's she did. duct taped. Yeah, she did, he, or he did deserve this one. Anyway, his mouth is duct taped. Liz is like going to get Damon to compel Bill to forget, but she tells him to like check him for vervain first. So of course, you know. Bill starts trying to say that he was helping Caroline. And Damon is like, if anyone doesn't need help, it's yeah. your control freak daughter. It's Caroline. I'm glad you acknowledged that because that's so true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, she does not need help. She's the most in control. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Damon goes to feed on him to see if he's for vain free. And then before compelling him, Damon asks Bill like why he thought he could change Caroline. And Bill is just like, the mind is a powerful tool. It can be trained and retrained. You just have to be strong enough. But. We'll, we'll hear more of the same from Bill throughout throughout a few episodes. But for now, Damon is like, yes, I agree. I love mind control myself. And then, of course, Damon like compels him to forget. And he just thinks he was there taking Caroline back to school shopping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love this whole scene. Liz is like rolling her eyes yeah. in the background like this guy. You know yeah, she's regretting ever guy. marrying. Him. Yeah, like, she's like, that was embarrassing of me. <laughs> yeah. It's just, he's the worst. Yeah. Um. So anyway, we go back to Gloria's bar where Stefan comes in and Gloria is sitting at a table. She has like grimoires out and it's filled with candles that are all lit. Klaus and Rebecca are sitting at the bar watching. And Rebecca says that Stefan left them. <laughs> and he says, retail therapy was making my head explode. Yeah. And and Klaus is like, tell me about it. Again, these two bonding. They're really vibing. And Rebecca's the butt of the joke, basically. Mm-hmm. And so Stefan asks what Gloria is doing. And Klaus says, failing. <laughs> Which, love him for calling her out. And Gloria's like, it's hard to find something when you have literally nothing, nothing. to go yeah, off of. Yeah, it's been Just, 90 years. Yeah, girl, find a necklace. Good luck. <laughs> like They gave her nothing to go off of. Yeah. And so Rebecca jumps up and she's like, well, use me. I only wore it for literally a thousand years. Why wasn't that the first Yeah, I don't know why they didn't okay, initially sure. that, but whatever. So Stefan puts together, obviously, through this conversation that they're looking for the necklace again. Mm-hmm. And Gloria is like channeling Rebecca. We cut away and we see at the Gilbert house, Elena, Caroline and Bonnie are in the kitchen. Bonnie is filling them in on her really boring summer and the normal side of her family, which Caroline is like, I could use some normal right about now. Mm -hmm. Um, And Caroline is helping Elena, like, depot the chili into, like, some other dish. Oh, my God. And, um, you know, she's asking, like, Elena, like, when did you even learn to cook? Which, it's been a plot point several times about how Elena can't cook. I know. I love that. plot point. It's a a good, like, thing to keep coming back to. Yeah, it's a through line. Um, And so Elena says, well, Damon helped a little. Which the girls are both surprised to hear this. Like, you're cooking with Damon now? Like, Bonnie's yeah. like, 
very surprised even. And Elena immediately tells them, like, stop judging. He's mm-hmm. just trying to, like, be a good. And then she cuts off and she's like, she yells, ow. Yeah. And she pulls off the necklace. Mm-hmm. And where the pendant was touching her chest, there's a burn mark. Literally, like, where it was touching her. Mm-hmm. We go back to Gloria's bar. We see Gloria is still holding Rebecca's hand, still channeling her. And she's saying, like, I can sense something. And Stefan's looking nervous. <laughs> Back to the girls, Elena realizes it was, like, the necklace that burned mm-hmm. her. And she takes it off, and she's holding it out by the chain. And Caroline is, like, taking this moment to be like, maybe it's a sign you shouldn't be wearing it. Of course. Very Caroline. <laughs> Bonnie cautions her. But Caroline, again, continues. I'm just saying, if you're going to be mm-hmm. cooking with without Stefan. Interesting. She says Stefan here. And Bonnie asks to see the necklace. So Elena holds it out to her. We see Gloria again, still mm-hmm. chanting, still doing spells back to the girls bonnie's looking at the necklace and she touches it but it like zaps her and yep. then sparks literally mm-hmm. start flying off of it elena quickly drops it and like they all just look like shocked bonnie and elena kind of look at each other confused and like, yeah obviously like what the heck yeah what happened? is going on yeah cut back to gloria and gloria's like i found it <laughs> <laughs> yeah spell done <laughs> yeah and of course rebecca is like okay then where is it but gloria does say like it doesn't work like that like yeah you know i just got images i saw a girl with her friends rebecca is of course like a dead girl with her dead friends <laughs> yeah, i love like, her that's so funny <laughs> like girl it's been missing for 90 years it's not yeah. surprising it's that not someone like else they stole it off your neck exactly. <laughs> yeah but anyway um gloria says like she needs more time to, to like actually figure out exactly where it is and then klaus kind of starts hovering she says she also needs space mm-hmm. before she can keep looking for it and yeah klaus is very like not happy but he's Stefan, pushing yeah, yeah klaus is pushing but Stefan diffuses the situation he gets klaus and rebecca to leave the bar to go feed on people of course yeah Classic. you gotta say what he says he like gets in like he gets really close to klaus and like wraps up next to him and is like <laughs> I'll let you pick who we eat. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's so like boyfriendy. Yeah. Like it literally. I'm like, how are they not literally just boyfriends? They are. Because it's no, they so are. like, come on, I'm hungry. Yeah. I'll let you pick. Come on, like, eat something. You'll feel better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's exactly what they're Honestly. doing. Honestly, it's so funny. So yeah. anyway, so he gets them to leave, and yes. Gloria's going to keep doing her spell and figure out what's going on here. Yeah. So. Situation diffused for oh, now. No. Yeah. Yeah. But trying to figure out what is going on, the girls are at the party at the Lockwood Mansion. We see, like, you know, there are people at tables yeah. at the party. There's, There's, like, a picnic table, tons yeah. of people in the backyard. Definitely giving huge picnic summer party vibes. Yeah. There's some sort of, like, cookout thing where people would bring chili, of course. And Elena and Caroline are sitting, like, kind of away from everyone on, like, a little bench. And Bonnie rolls up with all of her grimoires. And, which of course these are yeah. huge books why she brought them to like, this here is the least suspicious yeah it's kind of most a, suspicious kind of an odd choice but she brings the grimoires and starts looking through them and says she's going to try to figure out what magic affected the necklace mm-hmm. so elena gives her the necklace and while bonnie is like reading the grimoires caroline interrogates elena again like starts talking to her about switching salvators and Caroline's going on and on about basically how she can't change Damon. Like, if Bill can't change her, if Bill can't be changed, no one is changing Damon, not even Elena. Mm-hmm. When suddenly Bonnie is like, hey, guys, <laughs> cut to, we see the necklace is, like, levitating over the grimoire. And they're like, what is going on? And Bonnie says it has its own magic. Mm-hmm. So it's like levitating itself. Bonnie's not doing anything. Yeah. So now the girls are aware there's something to do with this necklace. Yeah. Um, cut to my favorite plot point, the chili. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is a real chili plot. <laughs> Damon is looking at the food table and noticing the fact that mm-hmm. every founding family has brought chili. It's like Forbes chili, fell chili. <laughs> <I was laughs> Which is dying. funny. It is it funny. Is so, it's such a random storyline. <laughs> it's so funny that they did that. But anyway, Alaric joins him, giving him a beer. And Damon says that the secret of these, like, founding parties is that, like, it's just a thing for council members to go meet secretly in the back and Mm -hmm. plot against vampires. Um, That's why there's so many of these parties. Which I was like, wouldn't it just be easier to just meet? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why we need the party. That kind of makes it more obvious, but whatever. Yeah. Um, And so Alaric instead takes this moment to say, I think you need to take a beat with Elena um whatever whatever it is that you two have going on i think it's a bad idea which damon is like obviously offended by he says it's not rick's problem mm-hmm. and he says like alaric says 
I'm supposed to be looking after her. This is me doing that. And Damon says, like, well, what do you think I'm doing? Yeah. Which Alaric is like, well, I think what you need to do is take a beat. Yeah. Which, finally, Alaric is taking over this protective, like, dad role. I really appreciate that. And I I think he's right here. Like, I don't think he's wrong. That it's, like, Damon shouldn't be getting so close to Elena when she's Mm -hmm. in such, like, a vulnerable place. Like, I get it. But I do think he's doing the thing he's been saying where he's, like, I want to make her fall in love with me before Stefan gets back. So I have, like, an upper hand. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's, It's, like, a hard position to be in as a lark but i appreciate that he tried yeah he tried yeah he tried but probably for the best liz shows yeah, up thank and God. calls damon to the council meeting which yeah i feel like it just would have been so badly if that conversation continued which it does eventually but it does and it ends badly he, yeah so thank god liz so, intervenes right yeah, now time for the council party yeah so they they go in and talk to the council but we see back in chicago Klaus is like sitting on a couch in the warehouse drinking from a girl and mm-hmm. Stefan is doing the same while, while Rebecca is just like kind of sitting there yeah like and great. she's just like got her arms crossed she looks miserable yeah, she's not happy she says which her, she announces yeah yeah she says her girl is finished so she's she's bored <laughs> yeah my girl's dead I'm bored yeah and Phenomena by the Yeah Yeah Yeahs is playing oh, so the best. basically I didn't even catch one word of dialogue <laughs> in this scene I barely know what happened <laughs> yeah everyone's um, vibing yeah they're um, just hanging out out vibing yeah because klaus and stefan are making fun of rebecca like mm-hmm. they're the, the vibe they've been on this whole episode yeah exactly who's upset and like is asking why they're being mean to her mm-hmm. and she's like especially you stefan you used to love me yeah and klaus like defends him and is like it's been 90 years like give him a second yeah um which, true fair yeah which rebecca is obviously still upset that did not help anything mm-hmm. and so she gets like even more upset saying like that Klaus is making it sound like she's a brat, which I thought this was interesting because I don't know. I, I do think it's true where like Rebecca isn't really that bad, at least in these first two episodes. It's Klaus constantly saying that she's that bad. Yes. That makes her seem like yeah. she's bad when actually she's not really being that bad. Like she literally or her last memory of Stefan like two days ago, they were in love. And now. Like, yeah, that's true. It would have literally been two days ago. Yeah. I know. I don't think she's being that bad either. Yeah. And obviously like she does end up kind of becoming that bratty type so it's yeah, hard it's to separate hard to it out at this point now. but yeah yeah no i know i think i feel like she's totally fine and justified yeah which stefan jumps in saying that klaus isn't a picnic <laughs> either oh my god <laughs> coming for him he says after one summer with klaus he's ready to blow his head off <laughs> Stefan is such a drama queen. He's such a drama queen. Rebecca loves it, though. She's laughing it <laughs> yeah, up. She laughs. She says, fantastic. Yeah. She's eating it up. Yeah, yeah. these siblings love going after each other. <laughs> yeah, he has... Stefan has them both wrapped around his finger. He does. And so he gets up, letting his girl mm-hmm. drop to the floor <laughs> dead. And he says he needs to go. He's just yeah. like, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Rebecca's obviously like what yeah like where would you be going and Klaus tells Rebecca like he's going to write a name on a wall long story long story which so funny that Klaus knows this but Rebecca doesn't I'm like surprised he told him but not her and also like it's this way of like being like they're so connected and Rebecca doesn't get it yeah um but also I have to say I was laughing so hard and I made Rachel watch this too the way Klaus is holding his girl on the couch is so funny he's like cradling her like a baby and he's like leaning over her (laughs) it makes no sense like Stefan was on a chair lounging the girl's body on top of his body yeah you know whatever but Klaus is like cradling her like a child forward too like yeah like I must take care of her yeah (laughs) even though I'm killing her yeah she's definitely dead yeah it made me laugh so hard yeah no it was funny yeah but anyway back at the Lockwood mansion Jeremy like walks into the dining room of the mansion and closes the door and he calls out for Anna and Anna appears and asks him like why he hasn't told Bonnie that he can see Anna and Jeremy is kind of like cagey about it. He tries to say she's been gone all summer. And Anna's like, well, that's not a good reason. And basically he just says like, you know, I don't really know. I'm kind of trying to wrap my head around the whole thing. And Anna at this point mentions that like getting Anna to appear is like a push and a pull. So like Jeremy ha- or she has to push and Jeremy has to pull. Mm-hmm. And Anna also starts to tell him about like the other side and how it's basically like she's in their world, but no one can see or hear her. And there's no one else. Like, yeah. apparently, the you're other all side, alone. you're literally just alone. Yeah, it's like, not everyone like she, kind of has their own other side. Yeah, she can't see Vicky. Vicky can't see her. Exactly, yeah. But she does say, like, when Vicky's around, 
she feels like a sort of darkness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, she's warning Jeremy, like, Mm -hmm. you know, don't pull for Vicky. Like, don't let Vicky connect to you. Um, Like with the windows that we theorized about the last one, like that he she she kind of confirms, I guess, that that was Vicky trying to push Anna out, trying to get her away from Jeremy. And at this point, Anna like kind of puts her hand on Jeremy's, which is resting on the table in the dining room. And Jeremy doesn't notice it at first because he obviously can't feel her. But then he looks and she like says like he can't feel anything. But he tells her to do it again. And they do like a little hand touch thing. Yeah. And they have a little moment where we see the sparks are reconnecting. I was going to say, this is where it does start to tiptoe towards the line. We're getting, like, we're nearing mm-hmm. there every scene, basically. Yeah, we are. It's nice for her. I mean, she just talked about how she's so alone. So it's nice yeah. to like give yeah. her something like that. But it's definitely like, eh, Jeremy. Yeah. I don't know about this. Yeah. Uh, oh, Jeremy. Anyway. Anyway, back yeah. Back to Chicago, where in Gloria's bar, Stefan shows up, and it's just Gloria there by herself, and he asks her, like, what she saw when she was doing the spell earlier, and she says, like, it's more about what she heard that mm-hmm. was interesting. The girls with the necklace were talking about Stefan, and Stefan asks why she didn't tell Klaus that, and she says, like, I wouldn't help that half-blood hybrid yeah. with anything, <laughs> She's like, okay, so what has she been doing? I, yeah, I don't know what her angle is then, but well, okay. Well, so that's what she says next, actually. Is she says, like, the necklace is a talisman from the original witch, and she just wants it for herself, mm-hmm. which I don't know how she thinks she's, Klaus is just going to give it to her after using it, yeah. but whatever. This is clearly her goal is just to get the necklace. Mm-hmm. And so Stefan says, like, well, I can't help with that. But Gloria warns him not to be difficult. And she turns her back on him. She's, like, doing something at the bar, and he's kind of standing there and realizing, like, He's got a mm-hmm. problem here. You better do it. So classic vampire arrogance. He thinks he can just rush at her and fix course, the problem. Of course. So he goes after her. But of course, Gloria turns around, magically stopping Stefan, dropping him to the floor. He grabs his head in pain. And she says, guess we've got to do this the hard way. Later. Of course. See, yeah. It of like course. escalates very quickly. Yeah. We like cut further in time and we see Stefan is now shirtless lying on the <laughs> table. <laughs> Full magical spells going on. There are candles everywhere. Of course. Gloria has a knife at the ready. Yep. And Stefan is saying like he can't move and she's like, oh, it's just a little paralysis spell. Nothing major. So good. And she starts cutting his arm, letting his blood drip mm-hmm. off the table into these like vessels under him, like catching all of it. And she says, like, she has to get this information out of his pretty little head. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because she's, like, talking about how, like, witches nowadays with their magic, they don't do the old stuff, but she really likes, like, the old magic, the Mm -hmm. old school voodoo, which I just love. Love the witches. Love when they get to talk about their, like, art, basically. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I say art because she's now taking out iron hooks that she's placing in Stefan's cuts in order to, like, prevent him from healing and keep the blood dripping for as, like, much as she needs. And... Just imagine walking into a bar and this is what's going on. That's what I kept thinking during this. I was like, imagine you thought this place was open. You open up, there's a guy sprawled out, blood just dripping, candles, voodoo woman. I don't know. It's just really funny to me. But anyway, Stefan says, like, he's not going to talk. He's not Mm going to give her anything. And Gloria's like, you don't need to. Obviously. Obviously. (laughs) Stefan's like, she's just torturing me for info. Just like (laughs) vampires, too. He knows nothing about witches at all. Yeah, no. And so she explains that she's harnessing his essence, his spirit, Mm -hmm. and that she can connect to that through herbs, including like sage and witch hazel and her favorite, vervain. Of course. Singes. She's like burning him immediately yeah. and so he's like screaming in pain mm-hmm. and um if it isn't caroline getting tortured it's Stefan. it's Stefan. it's those two all the time yeah. going through this stuff so i just had to laugh at that but anyway this is the best magic we've seen so far in vampire Diaries, oh i know I think generally and of course Definitely. it had to happen via like an originals connection or something like they yeah. always bring in the best witches yeah no 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 this is so out of bonnie's league we haven't seen anything <laughs> yeah. even close to this no yeah, it never even occurred to bonnie to use little metal hooks to keep yeah, to stop the vampire <laughs> from funny. healing yeah she would never funny. no yeah but anyway back at like the lockwood mansion there's a little council meeting going on listen carol are leading the meeting 
they're both just saying it's quiet. Nothing has really been happening. Damon sort of chimes in like we've gotten through the worst of it. And the they corrupt council. Yeah. They there's also a reference made to like anything else to add to the minutes. They're taking <laughs> yeah. minutes at these meetings. I know. It's supposed to be a secret. That. Yeah. Who's I don't know. Writing that? Yeah. I don't know. It's just funny. And they just end up dismissing everyone because nothing's going on. And, you know, everyone leaves except Liz, Carol and Damon. And they're just kind of talking when Bill arrives on the scene. He rolls up and asks, do you think everyone on the council is just clueless or just stupid? Yeah. <laughs> like, nice. Which obviously both probably yeah, or at both. least one both. because no one else has any clue. Liz yeah. didn't even know. Like she just kind of happened into two this. Two days ago. Exactly. Like, literally two yeah. days ago. And how she even figured it out. I still don't know. So yeah. Oh, yeah. About Caroline. But Tyler, yeah. she only got shown two days ago. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. The corrupt council will be back to them later. Yeah. Like, it's just a funny setup. We cut back to the Gilbert house where Bonnie and Jeremy are in his bedroom. Again, candles, magic everywhere. Mm-hmm. So we're getting the, the magic vibes. But you know, it's a little bit less intense than it was in the Chicago Definitely. scenes. She's asking him to look for the necklace or any like necklace like symbols in any of the books it's like he's her little intern She's he, got him he on is the no he is he has been since last season <laughs> yeah he really has been um and so bonnie reveals that she can't talk to the dead witches anymore like she mm-hmm. doesn't have a way to harness them um because they cut her off when she brought jeremy back like they said there will be consequences and that was one of the consequences he's really shocked to learn this because he didn't know and she apologizes for not telling him sooner she says she told elena when it happened but she just didn't want to tell jeremy because it might make him uncomfortable Mm -hmm. like you know obviously it was to bring him back to life yeah um but jeremy claims like it's fine whatever and she's like you know well elena said you've been having a hard time like you know how are things he's like just i'm just a little out of it i'm good i'm good i'm good Good. about these books yeah (laughs) he just immediately changes the conversation like jeremy that was and this is probably why he does it is like that was your moment that was the perfect moment where they had just been reunited now like a few hours and to be like you know what actually i'm not so good because also the other thing i will say in his defense here is like he's only really been accepting of the ghost thing for like Mm -hmm. a day or two maybe yeah you know like at elena's birthday which was only three days ago he (laughs) that's true yeah which is crazy he was still like oh i don't know like i'm he was in denial i'm just out of it Yeah, yeah whatever he said so i feel like it's not that crazy if he told her now. He's only really known for like yeah. a day that he's actually seeing ghosts. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't been able to talk to either of them until now. Until like, literally today. Yeah. So it would have been a lot better. But no, of course he doesn't do that. He's of Jeremy not. in a no, teenage no, no, no. voice. He does not admit to that. So they're like looking at the books and suddenly Anna appears mm-hmm. and she warns Jeremy the darkness and suddenly all the books like burst into flames everything's on fire bonnie like freaks out but bonnie uses her magic to fling like the book jeremy was holding out of his hands and Mm -hmm. into the rest of the pile and she magically uses a spell to stop the fire and they both just obviously are like what was that they have no idea what happened which i also feel like i don't know what happened no clue i have to imagine it was esther obviously because magic and then also like vicky doesn't have that kind of like power but also, like, was yeah. Esther trying to stop them from finding out about the necklace? But, like, why? Yeah, I don't know. I was wondering that, too. I was like, what actually is going on? Because I don't think it could be Gloria. It has to be. No, and yes, I was thinking it's that, not, too. Vicky doesn't have that kind of power, either. It has to be Esther is, like, trying to stop them for some I reason. I guess so. Maybe because she yeah. knows they would stop her from coming back? I don't know. I get. I, I mean, they're so far away from putting that together that it's like I this know. feels preemptive. It's weird. Yeah, they don't even know like of the possibility of Esther. No. So yeah, it yeah, seems odd. I don't know, but we'll get into it in the next one a little bit. That stuff stuff starts to bubble up a little bit. Yeah, more, so yeah. There'll be more there. Yeah. But for definitely. now, we'll cut back to Gloria's bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gloria is still working Stefan, still torturing him, bleeding yeah. him dry, and Stefan is like kind of fighting her. He's trying yeah. not to let her in. But she's seeing like flashes of Stefan and Elena. So she's she's going to get there whether Stefan wants her to or not. Yeah. And Gloria starts saying like there's the girl with the necklace. Like you love her. You do anything for her. And you have. And she's saying like, you know, there's a lot of darkness there. A lot of guilt. And it's all to keep her away from Klaus. Why would Klaus care about this one girl? Mm-hmm. And Stefan at this point is begging her not to do this. Not to keep pushing him and looking further into his mind. And Gloria gets a glimpse of, like, the sacrifice. 
And she realizes Elena is the doppelganger and she's not dead. And that is why Klaus can't make hybrids or so everyone thinks. Yeah. (laughs) And at this point, we just hear, this is creepy. (laughs) And it's Catherine. We see her. Gloria turns around. Catherine's there and she puts like a stake or knife or something Something. into her neck and kills Gloria. Yeah. Gloria drops to the floor and Catherine just looks at Steph and is like, maybe you do need my help after all. (laughs) Thank God she showed up. Yeah, perfect timing. Yeah. Again, I don't really know what Stefan was thinking. Like, with, like I know his plan so with dumb. Klaus and Rebecca. Yeah. But in terms of Gloria and the necklace, he had nothing. No, he had nothing. And why not just use Catherine? I don't know. He was just being know. a little too egotistical there. Yeah. Again, with the thinking he could just attack Gloria and it'd be fine. I know. Like, come I know. on. Yeah. But I really like this scene in general as like a, I love the cuts of like Stefan and Elena like showing mm-hmm. her getting the necklace and like a special yeah. moments between them and I love that dialogue of the like you love her you do anything for yeah, her and you love- have. Like yeah. it's such a great little Stelena moment in like a season that is deprived. Yes. Um, very true. So I like that. But yeah, thank God Catherine saved the day. I know. Of um, course. I don't know why he was thinking no i don't know which is usually how i feel about most people as we will be getting into in this next scene because yes. at the lockwood mansion elena and caroline are talking about the necklace about mm-hmm. how they don't know like where Stefan ever got it from and a lark joins them like asking if it's finally time to go and mm-hmm. elena's like beyond where's damon because can't leave without damon of course. he's part of, course. of the crew. which of course caroline is right there for it and she's like I'm not gonna let that slide <laughs> yeah she says he's probably off doing bad things to good people yeah And then she's just like, consider me the honesty, please. I know. Girl. Relax, Caroline. I can't even hate on Caroline because I know I am Caroline. I also like to insert myself in my friends' relationships. But I'm like... Caroline's Girl. also so justified, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Because of her terrible experience with Damon. But like... It's just so, like, she just harps on it so much. It's a little too heavy-handed in this episode. It's like you're not even being effective at this point. Exactly. Because you're just just so heavy-handed. Yeah, because even Bonnie's, like, constantly, like, Caroline. Like, Like, stop. 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 So, anyway. But, anyway, Caroline suddenly, like, looks pretty upset. And she looks over and we see it's her father is there. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the first she's seeing him now at the party. And she's like, I can't. Like, I gotta. I can't. And so she runs upstairs to go hide. And... Alaric's like, what? Because somehow he just doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess it has only been probably like a day. A day. But yeah, still. it has only been a day. But yeah, so Elena fills him in. She's like, speaking of doing bad things to good people. Nice mm-hmm. little segue there. Um, and then we cut to seeing Alaric and Elena outside. And Damon starts to follow after them. And he's like, wait, wait, wait. Houston, yeah. we have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, filling them in about the Bill Forbes situation. He says he's been managing that. That he tried to compel mm-hmm. him and it didn't work. And Alaric, like, asks how, and Damon says, like, I don't know, but he threatened to out me. Don't get me started on the irony of that. Yeah. Damon, again, with the gay husband jokes is, like, so He's much on this it. episode. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Elena asks, like, what Damon even did to Bill in order to, like, figure all of this out. Mm-hmm. And Damon's like, that's not the important part of all of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he says that Bill wants to take control of the council, that he thinks it's been compromised, which Alaric is like, it has. It, has. it That's quite true. literally has been yep. compromised. It is being run by a vampire, a vampire's mother, and a werewolf's mother. So yeah. It has been compromised. Um, this, like, is pissing off Damon, obviously. Mm-hmm. He's like, Bill wants to put Vervain in the town water supply. And Elena's like, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Which also I was like, oh, Elena. Because she says, like, you know, it, maybe it's not a bad idea. It'll help you stay in check with Stefan not around. Yeah. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Ugh. I don't mind it so much because I think it is a good idea to put Vervain in the water supply. It is. But I still was like, Elena, shut up. To have Stefan be the one that has to keep exactly. Damon in check, I thought was the weird part of that, where I was like, I don't know that Stephen really kept Damon in check. No. If anything, I feel like Damon did a lot of what he did to spite Stefan. Yes. So I actually feel like, no. I don't yeah. know. I didn't like her reasoning there. Yeah. Which Damon doesn't either. That completely pisses him off. Yeah. And he immediately lashes out saying he should have killed Bill. Kill Bill. Kill Bill. <laughs> he should have killed Bill this morning. And Elena's like, that's Caroline's father. Like, you can't do that. And Damon's like, yeah, when I kill him... She'll still have one more parent than we do, which 
I hate that line. I was like, Damon, you're 170. Get over it, buddy. You're not some yeah. like Annie little orphan. <laughs> like, also, Elena's parents died relatively recently. Exactly. Weird thing to just bring up. I don't yeah. know. Like and so El- casually. Yeah, Elena and Caroline are 17. If they have one or any dead parent that is completely traumatizing. Yeah, like, it's don't terrible. Don't act like you yeah. having no parents is justification for killing Carolines. Yeah. So Damon's just losing it he's, in the scene. Yeah, he's really on one. Yeah, and so Alaric tries to stop him. Mm-hmm. And Damon says, like, Rick, you're completely killing my buzz today. Like, don't try it. And Alaric, mm-hmm. like, refuses and is still trying to stop him. And Damon says, your temporary funeral. <laughs> and snaps Alaric's neck in the yard of the Lockwood house. When a whole ass party is Yeah, at a whole ass party. Tons of people. Everyone's there. Elena obviously freaks out and asks Damon is what's wrong like, with what? him. Yeah. And he just leaves. He just walks yeah. away. He's like, he's over it. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. He's over it. What he's, a scene. He's wild in this episode, but I love him for this. <laughs> of course you do. Of course. <laughs> this is one of my best Damon Dump episodes. But anyway, another great combo of people, also on one in their own ways. Catherine is helping Stefan. She says she's been thinking about Stefan's plan. And she realized that Rebecca is the mark. Yeah. She realized Stefan is like intentionally excluding Rebecca because... One, it would obviously be too suspicious to just immediately be like, oh, I love you. Yeah. Fair. Makes sense. And then also she realizes that will also help him bond with Klaus because they can kind of like exclude him or her. And it will also make Rebecca want him more. Yeah. So it works on a lot of levels. Yeah. And Stefan is like, oh, yeah, like I'm taking a page out of the Catherine Pierce playbook. You know, they're bantering with each other. And she's still trying to like get him to tell like what what more of his plan is. And he says he doesn't trust her with anything, but she's, and she says, but we I saved you. Like, we're so beyond the trust aspect. Yeah. And Stefan does at this point decide to tell her, like, I knew them in the 20s and they were running for some, from someone. Isn't it interesting that an original who can't be killed would be afraid of some vampire hunter? Mm-hmm. So Stefan is planting the seeds and Catherine realizes, like, if you're making a move against Klaus, like, I want in. Mm-hmm. And Stefan is, of course, Stefan is still, like, convinced he can be this one-man show. And, yes, very sassy. And he says, like, no, I'm in this alone. Well, he (laughs) says, that's good to want things, Catherine. (laughs) Yeah, he's sassy. And he also says, like, if she's looking for a diabolical partner in crime, she should look elsewhere. Yeah. Which she ends up doing. Yeah, we'll see that. Yeah. I love, I feel like this era, specifically, like, this couple episode run in season three is so good because... Stefan and Catherine have amazing chemistry. Mm-hmm. Stefan and Klaus have amazing chemistry. Yeah. Like, I love the 20s. Yeah. I But this scene between Catherine and Stefan, I was like, I'm so justified in yeah. shipping Stefan. I know. I do I like, like them. I love them. Yeah. I do like them together. But of course, he's not letting her in. Mm-mm. But she's gotten what she needed out of that conversation. You know, like, she realized that, you know, Stefan has a yeah. goal, that there's some vampire. And she kind of mentions, too, she's like, oh, I heard about a vampire hunter, like, centuries yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of gave her, like, the lead that she needs. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Stefan leaves the glorious body, like, over his shoulder. Yeah, they're, they're completely covering around. it up. Um, so that ends that scene for now. And we go back to the Lockwood Mansion where Tyler gets home from football practice to find Caroline hiding out mm-hmm. in his room. Like, she's hiding from her dad. Yeah. Tyler offers to kick his ass. Yep. Good boyfriend. Yeah. Cute moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, which Caroline says no because she likes the shirt that he's wearing because she bought it and it was mm-hmm. super expensive. Yep. But also, like, at the end of the day, like, he is her dad. Like, that's her father. Yeah. Um, and so... Tyler hugs her and is like comforting her and he touches her hair again good boyfriend era but then they get back to like joking and like good vibes because yeah. Caroline's like oh you reek you smell mm-hmm. and they're like flirting about it and he takes off his shirt and they start making out yeah and then unfortunately her phone rings of course. and it's Elena who says it is actually like a friend emergency yeah. like she needs her immediately and we see her like standing out on the lawn with a lark's body <laughs> a still at her body feet. Yeah. yeah of someone who's gonna be alive in not that long yeah yeah, yeah. so clearly an actual emergency again. Yeah. yeah literally um but we cut to in the office where we see mm-hmm. bill pouring himself a drink when damon walks in 
so you know things are about to go yeah. down. Yeah, not sure which is the emergency. Lots <laughs> yeah. of potential emergencies. Yeah, lots going of on. emergencies because like they're poking fun mm-hmm. for now. They're like, you know, oh, I thought yeah. you'd abstain from drinking and mm-hmm. you know control and mind control and powerful tools and they're just you know whatever because clearly he got through the compulsion so they're poking fun at each other. Yeah, and Bill says like it takes a certain like human skill set, yeah. a certain level of focus in order to like you know avoid the compulsion it's a skill that he's honed over decades Mm -hmm. and he says plus your technique is a little lazy which is funny (laughs) but i'm just like how how is this a thing there's no way it's a thing i feel like bill is a liar and he just has vervain sewn into his like (laughs) socks and he's just like had a bathing in it or something i'm like this is silly well i feel like i could have potentially bought into it but yeah the line about damon's technique being lazy i was like what technique what yeah. technique could there possibly be? Yeah. I could have bought it if they ever, ever built into this again. But it never comes up again. The only other people who can never be compelled are always supernatural in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. So I'm just like, I just don't buy it. Because yeah. it's just weird. Also, you're telling me random ass Bill Forbes from Mystic Falls is the only person that ever figured this out. Yeah. And he just keeps this to himself. Even yeah. people at the armory have a lark never figured yeah, this out. Alar- yeah, that's true. That's like in like, legacies, a lark has still not figured this out. It's just yeah. weird. I'm like, I don't buy it. Maybe he's secretly supernatural, but he thinks <laughs> like his mind is so good. Yeah, I don't know. I yeah, don't know. I know. I was like, there being a technique, I feel like just it makes no sense. I don't know. There being a technique, them being you can train your mind to just not get compelled. I'm like come on yeah Yeah, you could probably train it over a century but how long could he really be working on this well that's what i was thinking because we do see stefan like fight the compulsion in literally the next episode so it's like it does seem like maybe you could potentially try to overcome it struggling like exactly exactly and he's lived for 150 i mean yeah probably hasn't been compelled also the thing he was fighting against was like literally killing someone he loves so exactly this is just like fighting against forgetting yeah it's weird seems odd it's so weird i don't buy it i don't think it's i don't think it makes sense i think he's got vervain sewn in his socks probably yeah it's just yeah checked (laughs) i don't know but anyway um so they're they're going on about this and bill says like he wouldn't expose Mm -hmm. them to the council because he wouldn't expose his daughter (laughs) to those more Morons, which I guess that answers his question of he thinks the council is stupid. <laughs> He's probably right. Um, yeah. But anyway, he says like he doesn't actually believe Damon will kill him because he doesn't think Damon would like risk like yeah. getting himself like, you know, in trouble for killing like the sheriff's ex-husband, which Damon says that makes you the third person to underestimate me today. And so, of course, he runs right at Bill and bites him. Of course. Immediately fill- feeding on him, making him fall to his knees. And Damon says, like, he isn't going to kill Bill. The kill Bill is killing me. I know. I love it. I was singing it the whole episode. <laughs> yeah, he isn't going to kill Bill. But he is going to find pleasure in little moments like this where he mm-hmm. can just, like, feed on him. Um, and, of course, like, he goes to bite him again. But... Caroline shows up and like pushes him off and she starts like beating Mm. up Damon they're getting into a whole fight and Caroline then like goes back to her dad because Damon's kind of momentarily knocked out and she forces her dad to drink her blood to heal himself and Damon comes back over is like let me beat him up like let me do this and Caroline immediately starts fighting him again they're like pushing each other around he throws her on the desk and is strangling her and he says he's stronger than her Mm -hmm. but then she says she's angry angrier and like breaks his arm headbutts him pushes yeah. him into the wall. Him the wall yeah, yeah. it's a whole thing and then elena shows up and it gives like caroline kind of the moment to like run grab her dad and like whoosh out and yeah, disappear we, with him and mm-hmm. we see damon is just like slouched against the wall bloody mouth and everything and mm-hmm. elena's standing there obviously completely pissed at him for for yeah. doing that yeah and she's she's obviously upset she's like damon you can't do this anymore not in this town yeah which i also hated this was not one of my favorite lena episodes not in this town just was such a i weird... know the problem is she's justified she damon's is. being the worst because damon also was like bummer i love a good girl fight which is funny but yeah. he's just making fun of like the fact that he's trying to kill people so i'm like i'm not anti elena in this yeah. one only because she's so justified in damon being the worst for no reason yeah she is but i feel like it's not really all that bad in the grand grand scheme of things which damon points out he's like it's nothing i haven't done before 
That doesn't mean it's not bad. <laughs> that means it's as bad as he's previously been. I guess. I guess. But she says, like, she doesn't want Damon to be what people think he is. And this yeah. this is the logic that I'm like, I disagree with her. Like, she oh, really cares because she doesn't want him to be that person. And for her to be in love with that person. Yeah. Which I don't love. And Damon is just like, well, I'm still me. I'm still a vampire. And she just yells at him. Like, she wishes he didn't have to act like one. Mm-hmm. And Damon tells her, like, he's not Stefan, so stop trying to turn me into him. Yeah, and then he leaves. And then he leaves, yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting scene. I don't know. I feel like I... It's hard, because, like, obviously she is trying to force Stefan on him in a way, but Mm -hmm. it is also, like, he is just acting out and being how he is when he feels like there's expectations on him. Yeah. why not just rise to those expectations, Damon? Yeah, but I also feel like everyone just leave him alone and he would literally be fine and doing nothing. I don't know. I don't think that's true with Bill is the problem because Bill isn't going to yeah, just leave him alone. I have no sympathy for Bill. <laughs> I, I like really, really hate him, to be fair. But yeah, I really hate Bill. I'm like, I would probably have he done away worst. with him by this point. but No, he is the worst, but murder is wrong. So yeah. I don't know. That's where it's so hard of like the supernatural show. The like regular yeah, logic is hard yeah. to apply to it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, supernatural logic that I think applies to reality mm-hmm. is Jeremy's situation. We go to the Gilbert house where Jeremy and Bonnie are cleaning up from the fire. And Bonnie says she's going to go get the vacuum. So Jeremy's in the bathroom washing his mm-hmm. hands. And Anna appears. And Jeremy goes and closes the door and turns on the water so they can talk. Bro, you know you're doing suspect. something. A little That's very suspect. You know you are doing something wrong when you're like, oh, I have to close the door and run the water yeah. so my girlfriend doesn't hear me talking to my dead girlfriend. Like, bro. Not great. So Jeremy tells Anna in the scene, like, he can't talk to her while Bonnie is here. But Anna says, like, she was just trying to warn him earlier about, like, you know, the something bad, the dangerous, like, darkness thing. Mm-hmm. And he says, like, okay, but, like, you can't be here every single time Bonnie is here. And Anna's like... Jeremy like I'm only here when you are thinking about me I'm only here when you're Mm -hmm. reaching for me and she realizes that this is why Jeremy didn't tell Bonnie about the ghost situation is because like she he still cares about Anna he does still she says cares but I think the implication there is loves and Jeremy like realizing all of this is like nope no 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 he closes his eyes and shuts out Anna like forcing her to just disappear and be gone yeah Um, and so finally this is what kicks jeremy into realizing he needs to do the right thing he comes out of the bathroom and bonnie is sitting there and he starts to tell her you know everything that's been going on like we don't hear it a lot but you kind of see it happening that like yeah you know he's telling her like what's been going on that he's been seeing the ghosts of his dead girlfriends and all of that and unfortunately we do see anna there he can't see her but we see anna just like yelling his name and screaming and like crying yeah her voice is kind of warped and yeah like she's on the other side you know like she is being like closed Mm -hmm. out so i don't know it's interesting it's like jeremy didn't wait as long as i thought he did in telling her yeah all in all not so bad yeah, he only he told her the first day she came home. Yeah, not but, terrible. However, <laughs> he did wait until it got like pretty intense to yeah. tell her. So, and obviously everything that's gonna happen happen after this kind of negates this conversation anyway. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's an interesting thing. So finally, Bonnie's in the know. Jeremy's finally fessed up about yeah. what's going on. Um, and we see Anna alone and crying. Yeah, sad, sad moment for Anna. Sad. But back at the warehouse with all of Klaus's coffins, all his siblings, we see Stefan is there alone for right now. And he's looking at all of the coffins and he sort of stops in front of one and looks like he's about to like open it when Rebecca comes in. So Stefan kind of like pulls away. Yeah. Giving like caught red handed. Yeah, literally. He should just be normal. He should have just pretended he was like sitting on it or something, you know? Yeah. This whole scene, I'm like, Stefan is doing too much. He's being too sus in this scene. Again, he's not the diabolical type. He's not. He's really not. This scene is good evidence of that. And Stefan starts talking to Rebecca about Klaus and he asks, why doesn't Rebecca just undagger her siblings? And Rebecca says, you know, Klaus would not be happy and Stefan uses this to kind of pivot to asking why, like, who who they were running from back in the 20s. Again, immediately yeah. overplaying his hand. I yeah. don't know what he was thinking. So obvious. And Rebecca tries to say, like, no one, no. And he keeps push. not like, it's not so bad, but he keeps pushing it. Yeah. It's very suspicious. And Rebecca says, I can't tell you. Like, Klaus wouldn't be happy to know we're talking about this. Yeah. And at this point, Rebecca kind of changes the subject to talking about Elena. 
And she says, like, you know, Klaus told me, and he also told me that you're only with him because Klaus saved Damon's life. Yeah. And he, like, starts to turn away, and Rebecca grabs Stefan and kisses him. Yeah. And they kiss for a moment, and Rebecca asks if he thinks he'll ever love anyone like he loves Selena. And Stefan is like, you know, maybe in time, which I think that was a pretty, like, casual way to play it off. Yeah. And she says... I know when you're lying. Yeah, she immediately switches up. It's yeah, like, she's act like dropped. <laughs> she's like, no, I already know. Yeah. And Stefan tries to like recover from this, but it's like too late. And she says, like, your kiss said it all. Like, yeah, there's you can't yeah, convince me otherwise. Away, and that was a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, that was worse. But also, I will say this is a little bit of. I mean, he was being a suspect the whole scene. But it's kind of wild of her and then Klaus to just decide Stefan's lying just because he doesn't want to kiss Rebecca. His well, girlfriend died like yeah, three yeah, months ago. Crazy. Here's the thing, though. I think it goes to what Klaus says in the last scene that we'll get to eventually when he says that Rebecca has this like supernatural, uncanny yeah. ability to like sense people. So I think yeah. it just ultimately goes to that of like she could just tell like this wasn't, oh, it's been 90 years and your girlfriend died mm-hmm. like your girlfriend died and you're so obsessed with her that you're still acting in her like name is kind of what I would assume Rebecca is suspecting. Um, I don't know. It's weird, but it is like all in all an interesting scene because of course they don't even get that much farther with this because Klaus immediately shows up and he says like, ah, Gloria's gone. Couldn't find her. (laughs) She's gone. New (laughs) witch. Come on. Yeah. He's like, we immediately need to go find a new witch. And he looks at them for just a moment and immediately realizes like something's Something's off. And so he asks them what's going on. And Stefan like really underestimated Rebecca here because she immediately goes yeah. in. She's like, something is wrong. Like, he yeah. was asking about Michael. He's not with us, Nick. I can sense it. Yeah. Immediately, she folds and, like, reveals him. So loyal to Klaus. Yeah. No loyalty to Stefan at mm-hmm. all. And Klaus immediately just, like, rushes at Stefan and it cuts away, ending the scene. Like, which I'm surprised he acted like that because why did Klaus even think Stefan was realistically with them? Like, he knew Stefan's been pretending for yeah. days. I mean, I think he was... We talked about this a few episodes ago. I feel like he was kind of in denial in wanting to believe That's that Stefan... Not that he was really fully there because it's obvious he's not. But I think Klaus wanted to believe he would get there. Yeah. But when she said he asked about Michael, I feel like That's that was true. like, all bets are off. Fuck this guy. He's not with us. Yeah, because it's not. It's no longer like, oh, he just doesn't want to spend the summer with us. He's doing it begrudgingly. It's like, oh, he's actively trying to move mm-hmm. against me. That's yeah. fair. That is probably what it is. Yeah. But it is interesting how quick that like flip yeah, happens. That switch of, like, up is. Yeah, Yeah, you're my bestie to me- now like die. <laughs> done. Yeah, you're done. <laughs> you're over. Yeah. Uh, speaking of dead besties <laughs> actually that's a perfect segue for once <laughs> damon is making himself a little drink yeah we see there's another glass he's making two drinks it looks like he's making like some sort of screwdriver yeah it's definitely the morning it's yeah, morning yes. sunlight next, next, next morning. day yes for sure screwdriver makes sense yeah little, little oj yeah and damon has his two drinks and he goes over to the couch that we see a lark is laying on he's yeah. dead which is saying a lot because now that we say it it's morning it's been, like, all night. That's yeah. a pretty long time for a lark to still be out cold. But Damon takes the cup and he starts, like, clinking it, like, moving it around in a lark's ear. And it's like, wakey, wakey. Yeah, like, yeah. trying to get him up. When a lark suddenly... <gasps> the yeah, classic, back the classic, to life. Yeah. I'm alive. Back to life. Gasp of breath. Mm-hmm. And Damon is like... Damon, at this point, mentions, like, wow, it took a really long time. Better make sure the ring isn't going bad. Like... Yeah. Overnight is way too long. Yeah, it was probably 12 hours or so. Yeah, probably. Yeah, long time. And Alaric just is not, he's not happy that Damon killed him. He They, like, kind of have an argument for a second where Damon tries to be like, oh, I was just mad. I was just on a tear. And Alaric's, like, basically calls him a dick and leaves. Like, they're just kind of, Alaric is not having any of this. Yeah, no. He definitely wants out. Yeah. Um, and it's so funny because they're, like, going back and forth where Alaric is like, you killed me. And Damon's like, you pissed me off. And Alaric's like, you, you killed, killed me. me. Yeah. <laughs> like, bro, these are not, like, not fair or measurable things at all. Like, Damon's yeah. not getting it. And, you know, again, Damon is saying, like, no hard feelings. Like, yeah, he's trying to play it off. off. Yeah. Um, 
but Alaric's like, maybe people are just realizing you're literally just a dick. And yeah. so he gets up and storms out and leaves. Like, he is done with Damon. That was, like, such an... Un- like, just randomly killing your bestie because you're a little bit pissed is really pretty bad. Yeah, not great. <laughs> not, not great. great. <laughs> not great. Speaking of besties who are um, mixed, uh, mixed... Mixed vibes. vibes. Mixed yeah. vibes is a good way to put it. Caroline and Elena are walking through the town square. And Caroline is, again, inserting herself in Elena's love life. She is, like trying to get elena to admit things and mm-hmm. elena does finally admit like you and damon were both right i was trying to change him but if he wants to be in my life and caroline says it's been a long week i'm just gonna like jump to the point mm-hmm. here it doesn't matter what he does damon has gotten under your skin and elena won't even admit to that she like won't admit that she's attracted to him like Al- Nothing, caroline yeah. calls him like the bad bro- brother glory or something yeah, which yeah. i thought was funny and elena literally says no like she will not mm-hmm. like cater to this at all and she says if i admit it if i even think about it what does that say about me and caroline says it says you're human elena which I didn't like that response. I feel like the like, you're human is always such like a weird like I guess it works in supernatural shows, but it's yeah. like, like I don't know. I'm girl, like, as if you don't fall for Klaus. Yeah. I don't know. It's like a weird thing to point out that she's being human. I don't know. Yeah, it's I don't weird. know. But anyway, yeah, that's kind yeah. of like as far as we get with that discussion, because then Caroline spots Bill, who's like walking mm-hmm. to his car through the town square. And Caroline says, you know, she's gonna go talk to him, um, and you know, see what's going on. And he says that he's going home before somebody kills him which Her. smart yeah they probably would and he shows her that like his neck is healed from you know the blood that mm-hmm. she gave him and you think maybe for a hot second bill's turned a corner this hasn't been like a completely awful conversation so for yeah. half a second you're like maybe he's not so bad maybe yeah maybe caroline saving him helped yeah maybe that really did something and then he acts like a complete little bitch yeah he says because she starts to say like goodbye you know don't worry i'm gonna be okay Mm -hmm. and he says you're a vampire sweetheart i don't think you'll be okay ever again bill and he gets in his car and drives off this is why i have no sympathy for the whole damon wanting to kill him plot like (laughs) same like i'm done i'm done with him he's been here for two seconds it's so sad that caroline is so willing to forgive him and just play along with all of this because it's like girl like he's never gonna he's never ever gonna gonna change. change no 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 he just won't yeah, Mr. Mind Power. The mind is a powerful tool. He's, yeah, not he's not changing. There's no way. So it's just such a devastating moment for her. But things that will change, people that are trying to enact change, is of course Alaric. Yes. Um, we see at the Lockwood Mansion, we've got like a little mini council meeting going yeah, on. Yeah, a little impromptu session. <laughs> yeah, Liz and Carol are meeting with Alaric, who is saying like, the Gilbert family is a founding family and they deserve to have a voice on the council. I'm the one taking care of them. I should get to be that voice. Mm-hmm. And classic Carol, who literally inherited her job via her husband dying. I know. She became mayor from that. I know. She's like, that's not the way it works. <laughs> <laughs> you got to marry a founding family member and then let them die. Yeah, come on. <laughs> we all know. But yeah. anyway, Alaric's like, the council's job is to protect people. You yeah. have a vampire, like a vampire daughter, a werewolf son, and an actual vampire running the council. Who's looking out for the actual yeah, people no. that this is supposed to be protecting? And he says, like, the supernaturals don't follow our rules. They don't follow our laws. They look out for themselves. And that's what the humans should be doing. Like, we need to be taking care of the humans. Mm -hmm. And he just gets up and leaves. Like, he made his speech and they can make their decision now. But I thought this was an interesting, like, scene. Because we're actually watching Legacies right now. We're in the first (laughs) season. Yeah, yeah. Personal Um, life update. update. Yeah. Um, But I think it's interesting in the context of Alark's character at large. Is like, he is this character who is always looking to make change and help people who are being Definitely. repressed and like i don't know he's he's so about like you know being there for the little little, little person and like yeah. you know i don't know i thought that this was interesting i think this tracks with his character perfectly yeah no i thought that too having just started legacies i yeah. was like okay actually this like fits like yeah it's so alaric they kind of lose the plot with alaric for a minute <laughs> in, in vampire diaries but i was like yeah actually this all works yeah so, totally yeah that does. was a good little moment to have mm-hmm. Yeah, another good little moment. We see Catherine, well, 
it's so supposed, supposed to, to be Elena. Yeah, it's supposed to be Elena, but obviously yeah. we all, all of us rewatchers know it's Catherine. Mm-hmm. But we see someone in like a green little like camisole, like Elena was wearing. The classic, yeah, the, this outfit, the classic straight hair of Middle Park, literally yeah. Sarah right now. <laughs> we see this person wearing that walk up to the table with Bonnie. And of course, it's Catherine pretending to be Elena. And Catherine starts talking to Bonnie and talking to her. And she asks, like, if she can get the necklace back because of the whole Stefan of it all. Yeah, yeah. Very, she just wants it. Yeah, yeah. very makes sense for Elena. Mm-hmm. And Bonnie gives her the necklace. And Bonnie asks Elena. Jer- <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting messed up. Bonnie asks Catherine if she knew, like, if Jeremy told her that he's been seeing ghosts all summer. And Catherine, of course, is like, what? Like, yeah. Oh, wow. What? I can't ghost. believe this. See yeah. a ghost. <laughs> and Bonnie tells Catherine, like, it's because she brought him back to life and all these things. And at this point, like, a waitress comes up to refill the coffee, I think. Mm-hmm. And Bonnie turns to look at the waitress for, like, a hot sec. And when she turns back, Catherine is gone. Yeah. Obviously, Obviously the it's indicator, Catherine. it's Catherine. Yeah. yeah. So only a, a little, like, fooling us for a moment. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then we see... Yeah, if you weren't sure, yeah, Catherine, this if you scene didn't confirms know, it. Yeah, then we see Damon opens the front door, and it's obviously the same person who was talking to Bonnie, mm-hmm. with it has the little black cardigan and the green camisole. And Damon, of course, thinks it's Elena at first, too. And Damon says, you know, I'll only accept a written apology. And Catherine, like, wants to pretend to be Elena for, like, a hot sec, and she kind of just, like, gives him, like, a, a neutral, like, you know, not having it face. But then she smiles yeah, and kind of laugh. Yeah, and laughs and asks him if the two lovebirds are fighting already. <laughs> Damon is like, oh, like yeah, he, he realizes. He and Catherine tells Damon that she's looking for a partner in crime, just like Stefan told her to go do. Yeah. And Catherine asks Damon if he wants to take a little road trip and get yeah. out of Dodge. And Damon says, like, she has great timing. He was just told to take a beat. This would be good. And Catherine says, like. Is that a yes? Like, I'll drive. And Damon's like, yeah, sure. Like, where are we going? Just immediately down. And Catherine doesn't tell him. She says, we're just going away. She's not going to tell him more. But she holds up the necklace and is like, I promise it'll be good. Mm -hmm. So they're off on their little road trip. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So we'll see in the next one what those two get up to. Mm -hmm. Um, But for now, we also see the big. Someone else took a road trip. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So we're in like the interior of. It's like a small dark room. You don't know what it is just yet. Yes. Stefan is sprawled out on the ground, <laughs> blackout. He is out, and he's kind of like coming to. Coffins and, all over. Yeah, coffins everywhere. Klaus is standing there looking at him, and Stefan says, "Like, just give me a chance to explain myself." Like he immediately knows, like I'm dead. It's over. I'm dead. But Klaus is like, there's no need. I'm not mad. I'm just curious. <laughs> so clearly they haven't broken up yet. <laughs> Still boyfriends. And Klaus says that Rebecca thinks that Stefan has mm-hmm. a secret, something from his old life. And he says, the thing is about Rebecca, mm-hmm. she's got flawless instinct, borderline supernatural, which I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I think yeah. It's like kind of a hint at their witch lineage. There's something I think there so where too, it's like, which I like. Yeah. yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And so Klaus says that he decided to check what Stefan has been hiding, that he needs to see what it is. So he goes and opens <laughs> what we now see is the back of a truck door. Yeah, like a U Haul type of vehicle. Yeah, yeah. big truck. And we see it's literally the Mystic Falls Town Square, the yep. clock tower, the Mystic Grill. It's all it's right clearly Main there. Street. Yeah. yeah, literally. And Klaus says, "Welcome back to Mystic Falls, <laughs> Stefan." I love Klaus. They're back. Also, when you get the wide shot, you see all the coffins like in the truck. Like, yeah, really yeah. So you're like, "Oh, he brought the whole family mm-hmm. in tow." Yeah, now. we're oh, they're staying in Mystic Falls for good. <laughs> yeah, they moved yeah. in. Yeah. So also, Rebecca is not in sight. I, I know, like to I believe like, she drove the U. <laughs> I was gonna say I was fully picturing she was like I need a minute by myself. Oh no, no. I need a yeah, solo She's in like the trip. cab. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Even though she probably doesn't know how to drive, she was like <laughs> that's true. Put in the car. Women in the weren't time. allowed to drive back then. <laughs> she's swerving. <laughs> so the funny. parking lot of the warehouse. They did like a little practice yeah, they were driving. Like, you got this. They were like, it's yeah, she's. <laughs> No, I always question the Rebecca catching up on modern times thing because it's I know. Like weirdly fast. Like, I know she's a vampire who's used to it, but I'm like, this was an industrial revolution that had not been yeah. seen before. Like, girl, like, ca- caught up so fast. I know. Yeah, she's, like, texting and not a, yeah. not that long of an, like, a yeah. jump. 
in the next episode. Yeah, in the next episode, she uses the phone. So, yeah. like... Yeah, it's really I know. Crazy. I think about that, too. But anyway, we'll but have anyway. so much to talk about in the next one. I'm so excited for that one. Yeah, yeah. So, if you have any thoughts on this episode or, the, like, the next episode that we'll get into, call us, leave a voicemail. We'd love to hear from you. You can also comment on YouTube or, like, DM us on Instagram. So, yeah, let's turn it over to our voicemail host for this week. Hey, ladies, I'm Bryn, and I have so many thoughts on this episode, so I'm just going to go through them as quickly as possible. For one thing, it always confused me how Caroline seemed shocked that Elena and Damon were spending time together when we've seen throughout the last two seasons how much Elena understands him and how she genuinely does see him as a friend even before she's canonically in love with him. It makes sense why she's worried about her having feelings for him, but I've never understood why she thinks it's confusing that they were spending so much time together as friends. Like, they were cooking together in season one, too. And I understand her comments more in season four, but at this point, she knows that Stefan has been gone and has done horrendous things that outmatch Damon, so it's still a little odd to me. Also, Catherine's first outfit is one of her best modern looks. It's so summery and girly, yet still so quintessential Catherine, and I just love that balance. Also, Damon has some really funny lines this episode with, so Mayor Lockwood called your gay husband to torture your vampire daughter and the follow-up of, is that what you told him when you two got divorced, is so fucking funny and out of pocket. And Ian's delivery is just perfect. Also, his quote, if there's anyone who doesn't need help, it's your annoying control freak of a daughter, just shows how much Damon has grown to respect Caroline, even if he gets annoyed by her. Also, Rebecca says that she wore the necklace for a thousand years, but we never see her wearing it in flashbacks in the originals, as far as I can remember, which I think would have been a really cool continuity between the two shows. Also, I just love how Stefan tells Catherine to look elsewhere for a diabolical partner in crime, and then later she's asking Damon to basically be her partner in crime. He just stays being her second choice, and it's so sad. Anyways, sorry this was long, but love you guys, and I love the podcast. Can't wait to listen. Thank you to our voicemail host. Mm -hmm. And yeah, to wrap up this episode, for deaths, we have Alaric killed by Damon. Yeah. I think we said before this episode, before we started recording, this is his third death. Yes. Yeah. One in season one, one in season two, and now first in season three. Now this first in season three. Yeah. Yeah. Important. Because obviously we see... That's coming up. The ring is losing some juice, for sure. Yeah. And also gloria was killed by Catherine. yeah and stefan rebecca and klaus each killed a girl that oh they yeah fed on. that's right yeah, so we got like five girls. five deaths yeah four and yeah, a half it's casual yeah okay. yeah well, Clark barely bad. counts yeah. he'll be back he's back yeah, yeah. we have a significant one in the next one a fun one. Oh yeah um, definitely but that takes us to our out of pocket or things we would have done differently mm-hmm. for me i kind of had a hard time because i feel like this is a very serious episode so things don't necessarily yeah, warrant that so like too. title the one thing i did decide that i was going to nominate was caroline going so hard on elena about mm-hmm. like the stefan and damon thing yeah and like i said i don't necessarily dislike or whatever about some of it but like she's not even just going in on the damon of it all she's also like going at her about wearing the necklace of Stefan's. Like, yeah. I don't know. She's just weird. constantly on it that it's just like, that was my out-of-pocket. Where I was like, it's not necessary, yeah. Caroline. Like, Elena knows. She knows. She knows. She knows. I know. I do think that's a good one because it's also, it's just making Elena feel bad. Yeah. Which I don't think is really necessary because she already feels bad. Yeah. And I don't think it's Caroline's, like, intention. She's just, like, doing yeah. that because she's not thinking. Yeah. No, so. I, that's a good one. My, the one that I thought of, obviously, was Damon just killing Alaric just because oh, they, like, yeah, had a, a disagreement. One, he didn't like him, like, getting yeah. in his way and not wanting him to kill someone. Yeah, I think that's the winner. Yeah. That's bad. <laughs> yeah, even though I'm pro-killing Bill, I'm like, yeah, yeah a little it's, unjustified for yeah. him to just snap Alaric's neck. It's one thing to kill Bill to get rid of a problem. It's another to just kill your bestie because you're a little yeah. pissed at him. Like, yeah, exactly. I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah, that's a good one. So, winner Damon for I think that's a good Alaric. one. Yeah. Um, next, we've got quotes. I feel like I wanted so many Damon ones to win i thought it was really funny this one i know i had uh, basically any of damon's dialogue could Mm -hmm. be good yeah yeah i had one you didn't even you brushed over it that i thought was so funny of his ex-husband gay ex-husband oh yeah yeah he does make he makes so many he makes so many the one i particularly liked was the first one when sheriff forbes is saying yeah well just because you and i are on okay terms doesn't mean that i'm suddenly a big advocate of your lifestyle Mm -hmm. and damon says is that what you told him when you two got divorced i thought that was good (laughs) it was like that one's wild that he was, was wild funny. for that and he like makes like a little like opened mouth like ha face yeah. and she kind of looks at him and like is like a little like rolled yeah. eyes smirk that i was like you know she appreciated that but she, she did couldn't laugh she couldn't let herself yeah but yes so yeah that was funny no that's a good one the one that stood out to me because it was just a quick little quip 
was just your temporary funeral. I, I just thought, thought about that. Was that. Funny. I thought about doing that one because I also was like, that was really smart. And I thought funny. that was let's funny. do that. Your temporary funeral. Okay, I, that's I a good one. I debate that one. I like that one a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, as for song, I mean, there was just such like a clear winner for oh, me. I already love said it. This one. We I talk about this it. one all the time. Yeah, yeah. If you have any runners up, I didn't have any. Oh, I just was oh, like, interesting. Eh. I, had I mean, two. I liked a lot of songs. Yeah, but all had, the songs were good, but yeah, I had two solid ones that I really okay. liked. Um, Floating time isn't working my side by Portugal the Man. We talked about good. before. I love Portugal the Man. Love when they play artists again and they yeah. play a few Portugal the Man songs. And I also really really like when they play Go Outside oh, by the Colts. I do like that which song. A they lot. play at the start of like the barbecue party when the girls yeah. are meeting in the back. I love. I was obsessed with that song okay, in high school. Same, obsessed. Same. If that. If the other song, if the winner wasn't in this episode, yeah, I know. it would have be been that. Go Outside because I think that's yeah. a solid Vampire Diaries song. Yeah, but the other one so is too. like one of our fave Vampire Diaries songs, so it had Top to win. Tier. And it's funny because the moment isn't even like that significant yeah. with the song. No, um, but it's great. Yeah, it's obviously I already said it. It's mm-hmm. Phenomena by the Yeah Yeah Yeahs. Mm-hmm. It plays when yeah they're just in the warehouse feeding on women, Klaus, Stephanie, and Rebecca. Yeah, well Rebecca's not feeding, but yeah, she's done. She's done. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's just such a good song. I love that song i've always yeah. said that would be like my baseball walk-up song if i was <laughs> gonna have say. one <laughs> i've always said since like i don't know i decided a that ago, a year yeah. ago yeah but anyway i love that song yeah. it, that's the obvious winner for me and oh, it's me so too. the vampire diaries vibe well i would actually say it's so original okay true true which is why i really yes, like it because agreed. they play and i love yeah yeah yes yeah. like genuinely they are like some of my yeah. top spotify artists every year because i love them i do love them too. and they are always played in the originals like always, it's a very yeah. klaus vibe when a yeah 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 song is playing so i was like excited to see this one and phenomena is one of the best yeah. so i wish they played it at like a bigger moment like that it got like more of a moment but i'm still glad they played it i love it i Same. think that one is an easy winner easy yep so we'll be adding phenomena by yeah yeah yes to our song of the episode playlist where we have all of the winners of best f- song from season one season two and how far we are in season three mm-hmm. we also have a playlist of all of the honorable mentions and winners for season three you can find both of those linked in our various bios and descriptions you'll also find there our tiktok and our instagram where we post fun memes clips polls all sorts of stuff um and you can interact further with vampire diaries and ribbit diaries so check us out there and listen to the podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And you can watch the video version on YouTube if you're into that. And yeah, join us next week for Season 3, Episode 5, The Reckoning. One of the best. One of the best. One of the top tier. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for watching and are listening to this one. Bye. Bye.